In the early days, people used natural substances like henna, red ochre, indigo, and even turmeric to color their hair. However, everything changed in 1907 when the founder of L'Oreal introduced the world's first synthetic hair dye. Since then, the landscape of hair coloring has evolved significantly. Nowadays, modern hair dye formulations are meticulously crafted, offering greater precision and versatility. Most brands combine both natural and synthetic dyes to create a wide array of shades and tones, allowing for subtle variations in color. But have you ever wondered how hair dye is made? Most commercial hair dye formulas are complex, with dozens of ingredients, and the formulas differ considerably from manufacturer to manufacturer. But these are the most important components when it comes to hair dye. Ammonia stands out as the crucial ingredient in hair dye. It's responsible for opening up the hair cuticle, essentially the outer layer of the hair, which allows the dye's color molecules to penetrate deeply into the hair shaft. Without ammonia, the color and other important chemicals in the dye wouldn't be able to get inside the hair properly. Alcohol, on the other hand, plays a significant role in the absorption process. It helps the hair soak up more dye, resulting in a richer and even more color. Think of it as helping the dye spread evenly across your hair strands. Peroxide is another key player, especially in lightening the hair. Once it gets into the hair, it works to bleach out the natural color or any old dye present. That's why you'll find it in toothpaste too. It's great for whitening teeth by bleaching out stains. Finally, there's pigments. You see, when it comes to your hair's color, it's all about two types of melanin, eumelanin and pheomelanin. The combination and amount of these pigments in your hair determine its color. For example, if you have darker hair, you likely have more eumelanin, while lighter hair tends to have more pheomelanin. To change your hair color, these melanin molecules need to be altered. That's where the chemical trio of ammonia, alcohol, and peroxide comes into play. They work together to break down the existing pigment bonds in your hair and replace them with the new color. Other components include modifiers, antioxidants, alkalizers, soaps, wetting agents, fragrance, and a variety of other chemicals used in small amounts that impart special qualities to hair. Conditioning agents such as glycerin, panthenol, or silicone derivatives improve the hair's feel, manageability, and shine. Preservatives prevent microbial growth and extend the shelf life of the product. Common preservatives include parabens, phenoxyethanol, and formaldehyde-releasing compounds. Fragrances add pleasant scents to mask the odor of chemical ingredients. Antioxidants protect dye components from oxidation and degradation, ensuring color stability. UV filters help prevent color fading caused by exposure to sunlight. The short story is that all these additives contribute to the overall sensory experience of using the hair dye and help maintain product quality over time. Before a batch of hair dye is made, the ingredients must be certified. That is, the chemicals must be tested to make sure they are what they are labeled and that they are the proper potency. Certification may be done by the manufacturer in-house. In many cases, the ingredients arrive from a reputable distributor who has provided a certificate of analysis, and this satisfies the manufacturer's requirements. Next, a worker weighs out the ingredients for the batch. For some ingredients, only a small amount is necessary in the batch. But if a very large batch is being made and several ingredients are needed in large amounts, these may be piped in from storage tanks. In some hair dye formulas, the dye chemicals are dumped in a tank and water which has been already heated to 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius is pumped in. Other ingredients or solvents may also be added to the premix. The premix is agitated for approximately 20 minutes. The premix is then added to a larger tank, containing the other ingredients of the hair dye. In a small batch, the tanks used may hold about 1,600 pounds or 725 kilograms, and they are portable. A worker wheels the premix tank to the second mix tank and pours the ingredients in. For a very large batch, the tanks may hold 10 times as much as the portable tanks, and in this case, they are connected by pipes. In a formula in which no pre-mixing is required, after checking and weighing, the ingredients go directly to the mixing step. 
The ingredients are simply mixed in the tank until the proper consistency is reached. If a heated premix is used, the second mix solution must be allowed to cool. The ingredients that follow the premix may be additional solvents, surfactants, and alkalizers. If the formula includes alcohol, it is not added until the mix reaches 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius so that it does not evaporate. Fragrances too are often added at the end of the mix. The finished batch of hair dye is then piped or delivered to a tank in the filling area. A nozzle from this tank lets a measured amount of hair dye into bottles, moving beneath it on a belt. The filled bottles continue on the belt to machines, which affix labels and cap them. From the filling area, the bottles are taken to the packaging line. At the packaging line, the hair dye bottle is put in a box, together with any other elements such as a bottle of developer or special finishing shampoo, instructions sheet, and gloves and cap, or any other tools provided for the customer. After the package is complete, it is put in a shipping carton. The full cartons are then taken to the warehouse to await distribution. Government regulations control what ingredients may be used in hair dyes, as many of them are toxic. Industry researchers will have already tested a formula numerous times in the laboratory before it reaches the manufacturing stage to make sure a formula is non-irritating, works well, performs consistently, etc. As part of the manufacturing process, workers check their chemicals before they go into a batch to make sure only the correct chemicals at the correct potency are used. After the batch is mixed, samples are taken and these are subjected to a series of standard tests. Lab technicians make sure that the batch is the required viscosity and pH balance, and they will also test the dye's action on a swatch of hair. If a hair dye formula is being made for the first time, or if a formula has been altered, technicians will also test samples of the dye after the filling stage. That's about it for how hair dye is made. If you want to see more videos of how things are made, check out our channel.